you. As I said before, this is a synopsis of Torah Chafei Likutei Maran Chelak Aleph, and this particular Mahalach, this particular Torah is extremely important because those who are serious about getting into Avodas Hashem, really, you know, uh, there are certain things that they need to know. You know, if you're a pilot, you need to know what happens when you, you know, uh, about, you know, when you take off and when you land, and, you know, if, if you are a frogman, you need to understand, you know, how to, you know, diffuse the, 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 the whatever it is. It's all the things that you need, you need to know. So basically the territory says that it's, it says uh, when Beis HaMikdash was destroyed, three things were uh, disappeared. The first thing is the Shamir. This is the the, um, the worm that they used to use in order to crack the stones. Right, right, right. You know, without and, and they used to uh, engrave on the, the precious gems that were on 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 the on the on the, on the shoulders of Aaron Cohen and the Khabish without because he had to crack the stones without taking any of the substance, without reducing it. So you couldn't carve it. Right. So it was used by with the Shamir. And that's the one thing that was lost once the Samikdish was destroyed, we don't have the Shamir in the world anymore. People would say, what, what's the purpose of a worm, right? When people see a worm, what, what's, what's going on here? Look at the whole, look at the Hashem. And interesting, interestingly enough, interestingly enough, how did you keep a Shamir? I mean, it could crack a diamond. This is what it did. It cracked a diamond. So how, how do you store it? The answer, you store it with cotton oil, with softness. Yeah. Just a, a little uh, aside here. <laughs> the second thing that was destroyed is the Nofes Sufi. Nofes Sufi means the sweetness of the fruit of Eretz Yisrael. Eretz Yisrael, the fruit was, you think the fruit is good now. In the time of Bes Amikdash, they said a person used to take one fig, put it in the corner of the house, and just slice off. As you need it for months. <laughs> for months. <laughs> you know, they say that, that, that uh, I think Rabbi Yohanan said that once he ate from the fruits of the, 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 the salient of Gainosar, and he said that he got so, you know, that was such a. Uh, uh, it's, it wasn't sweat, it was just, just like oiliness that came out. I mean, he says that the fly landed and just glitched off just from the, the sweetness of the, the fruits of the salient of Genosar, of the valley of Genosar. And the third thing that was lost is Amana. Amana means people that you could trust, people that you can believe, that you make a deal of a deal and you don't, don't need the start in anything. I mean, people. You know, of a moon of people that you can believe, trustworthy people. Not so much. Not so much. Little bit. Not so much. Anyhow, so these three things, these three things were lost when Beis this was 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 destroyed. So it says these three things basically denote the stages that a yid has to go through in order to come to a proper and true cognition in a void session. The first thing a person has to get out of his demyonis, is the madama. We spoke about it once you were here, that we spoke yeah. about this, that, that the first thing is, I mean, everybody comes out, you know, even math, which is supposedly the most exact of all, of all uh, uh, sciences, is based on axioms, right? right. You know the you know the the, 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 the axiom of, of or the Pythagorean axiom or whatever it is, and this is something you cannot prove, but this is a basic assumption. This is built upon that. Okay, music. 
is based on notes. Notes are basically just randomly, that's what it is. And you know, uh, why is that that, that? Because that's a basic assumption. Every political system is based on an assumption. You know, communism, uh, imperialism, uh, uh, Islam, whatever, it's based on a set of specific basic assumptions that give you the framework upon which you build your intellect. A uh, person has the ability to assume, the ability to imagine, the ability to piece pieces together that are not evident. This koyach, this ability is koyach amadama. The koyach that imagines, that assumes, that doesn't need empirical proof to believe it. The Koyach HaMedama is a thing, I mean, is, let's say that there's, there's a force that is, is waiting, they say that they're putting an ambush to a, to a, to a Hamas fighter, you know, and, 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 and the Mechabel is, is coming and he's behind the bush. You don't see him, okay? But suddenly, you know, the sun glints on something of his gun, and suddenly you see different pieces in the bush that your Koyach HaMedama says, ah, there's a silhouette of a person there, okay, boom, you got him, okay? The Koyach HaMadama is the thing that takes the things, the little things, you know, and allows you to connect the dots of that which, which you don't know. But the Koyach HaMadama, with this amazing force, you know, Koyach that it has, you know, to, to give you the bigger picture out of scant details, also has an unbelievable Koyach to throw you off track. You know, suddenly you're talking about gender fluidity. Suddenly you're talking about, you know, people marrying animals. I mean, what do you mean now? Well, why now? I mean, you have to kill them is humane, but to love them not? They'll get there. You know, it's, okay. it's Koyach HaMadama. This it's, Koyach HaMadama can get you like... Anyway. So the first thing that the person needs to get, the Koyach HaMadama is that hypnotic trance that the person lives in this world, thinking, you know, I'm an executive, I'm a CEO, I'm just a mailroom boy. I'm just a cashier in a supermarket. I'm just a this, I'm just a that. Whatever it is, or I'm big, or I'm small, or I'm famous, or... This is Koyach HaMadam. The truth is, this is the Kodesh Baruch Hu, and this is where you are right now in the world, and what it is that you need to do vis-a-vis -vis that. That's it. That is the real... That's the real Seichel Amiti. But the problem is, first of all, you know, you live in the Koyach HaMadama, so the first thing that the person needs to do is to get out of Koyach HaMadama. You know, to stop living in a dream, stop living, you know, in these false assumptions. Learn what the Seichel Amiti is, okay? So this Koyach HaMadama is called Shri Salem. that's called the, the, the hardness of the heart. You have to break the stone heart of the Madama. The first thing you need to do is it to learn what the Seichel Amiti is. Now, the fact that you learn what the Seichel Amiti is still doesn't mean that you're living to abide by it, that, you're, that, 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 you, that you are able to live by that. It just means you need to know, you know, me watching these movies on the internet is not the right thing for me to do, okay? It doesn't mean I can stop, okay? Or me looking where I'm not supposed to look, or doing what I'm not supposed to do, or 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 doing business with people that I don't know because I feel that is otherwise I won't have pranasa. But these people are dealing uh, dishonestly, whatever it is, and I feel like I have no choice in what am I going to do. So I mean, all this is kaya madama. You are a, a prisoner in the jail of your mind, in the jail of the madama, and you're unable to get out. I mean, it's, it's the same thing as, as, as self-image. And all those things, all this is the prison of the Madama. It's called Shri Salem. That's the stone heart. The first thing you need to do is to break that, that total authority that this, this image has on you. This is the Shamir. The Shamir is the, 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 uh, the euphemism for breaking this chokehold the Madama has on you. At least you know that there's a Seichel. Okay? Now that we know that the Seichel, the Seichel is, is the sweetness of the Seichel, is when you know what the Seichel is. You're supposed to keep Shabbos. You're supposed to honor your wife. 
You're supposed to learn with your children. You're supposed to daven be kavonis. You're supposed to daven be koyach. Supposed to have whatever it is that you're supposed to. The Roshul Chanoch. All this. This is the sweetness of the seichel. You know about it, but it's still in the realm of theory. You know about it. You already broke. You broke the madama. You don't kid yourself that your, you know, your demyanus are, you know, the, the reality and everybody else is wrong, you know? And it's all his fault and her fault and his fault and everybody else's fault. I'm, if, I'm, if, only did it, if they only did things my way, everything would be 100% right. So this is the Shvirus from Adama. Now, when you start actually acting on the Seichel, when you start actually incorporating that seichel one step at a time. Now, incorporating the seichel doesn't necessarily mean that you're able to do everything. In fact, in fact, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're able to do anything. But you're dealing with it. You're talking to a Kaddish Baruch Hu about it. You're davening for it. You're pining for it. You're wishing for it. You're already being moitzim in a koyach lapoal. You're already you're already bringing from a state of of theory to the state of deed, dealing with that. You know, being frustrated with the fact that you're unable to do it yet. This is already like a fruit when it's when it ripens, the sweetness comes out. This is called when you start behaving according to the seichel. That is called nofas tzufim. That's the sweetness of the fruit. It means the fruit is getting... It starts with, with just, just a little bump. Yeah, but that's the beginning of the fruit. Right, it doesn't look right, like a fruit. Yeah, no, but, you know, but first of all, it, it, there is, you know, the, the fruit starts with a little, little hard little bump, whatever it is, and, the, and then the, the, the certain things fall off, whatever it is, and the fruit will look. And if you eat the fruit before the time, it's bitter, it spoils the sun. But that's the process of the fruit growing. That's the seichel growing when you are when you're starting to use it. When when you're starting to use it, this is nofes sufi. Now, at a certain point, you know, during that, you know, learning of acting on that seichel, it's like learning how to drive. You know, this is the gas pedal, it's the brake, this is, you know, the the, 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 the linker, you know, you're signaling, you signal to go to the right and to the direct, and this is the, the mirror, you're supposed to see it, remember the blind spots, you know, whatever it is, all, all those things, and when you're writing in these, you know, all the signs or whatever it is, and you learn, you know, what's the distance you can break, you know, you need to keep in the car, you know, dry weather, wet weather, whatever, a lot of different details, all these details are the particular seichols that are, you know, pieces of intelligence that are intrinsic in driving a car. At a certain point in time, you have done it enough time, and you have gained such proficiency at driving a car, that you just know how to drive. It's no longer a conglomeration of details. Okay, now I'm supposed to press this and so forth. It's, you're just driving a car. You just, you know it all thing. You don't need all this, yeah, now I'm supposed to do this, now I'm supposed to do that. The whole thing becomes like an automatic process because you have the entire knowledge of how to drive a car in one idea, in one knowing. You know how to drive. This is called Seichel Anikna. That is called the, the acquired Seichel. You already have the, the Seichel at its root. The main Hisha'aras, the main uh, 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 remaining of a person's Neshama in Oila Mabba is Seichel Anikna. Whatever it is that you are able to acquire in this world, in Seichel Amiti, and by practicing it, by fighting it, you know, against the, the thing, that, it, it all becomes a idea. Even knowing that you're bound to lose the battles, and some battles you feel like you'll never win, but nevertheless you keep on. It's a sechel and nikne by itself. This is yours forever and ever and ever. Okay? When you gain that, you have gained that particular level of seichel. You got it. 
Now guess what happened? Now you have to go to the next level. Now behind every level, you know, there are no two peoples in the world, two people in the world which exist on the same level. Right. Right. One on top of the other. So and and the every single person by the effort that you put in, that you put in, and the, the with every, you know, whatever it is, there's some total of the struggles in your toil, you're zoichem basically to two levels of Kedusha, there's of, 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 of sanctity, of holiness. There's a certain level of, of holiness that permeates your divrechal. You eat, you sleep, when you live at home, the way you speak to your wife, the way you speak to your children, the way that you do business, whatever it is, there's a certain level of Kedusha. This is called the outer Kedusha. That's the lower level of Kedusha, but nevertheless it is there. And then, of course, there's the inner Kedusha. That's the sanctity of your Tefillah, of your Torah, of your Avedis Hashem, of all the things that have to do. So you have an outer Kedusha, an inner Kedusha, external Kedusha, an inner Kedusha. Okay? One with uh, man, one with God? No, the yeah, external. yeah, yeah, yeah. One divrechol, one divrechol. Now, in the scale of the people that are standing one on top of the other like, like, like onion, skins, uh, onion skins, you know, one on top of the other, what happens is that, 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 um, no, that 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 uh, the sanctity of the divrechol, the external kedusha of the person who is a higher madriga than you, is greater than the sanctity of your tyrant fellow. Say it again. The sanctity, the holiness of the divrechol, of the eating, of the sleeping, of the business, of a person who is a higher madriga than you, is higher than the level of kedusha of your Torah and your tefillah. Of a person who is lower than you. Yes. And his inner kedusha obviously is still high. Same thing, there's a person under you. The kedusha of your eating and your sleeping and your business is holier than his Torah and his tefillah. We obviously have no kedusha meter, so we do not know which one is holding where, whatever it is, is it? But that's the way it is. Now, so we said that there is a little complex mechanism that explains the the, the process of ascension. So we gave it Hashem Moshe in order to make it clearer. We gave it numbers, so people will be able to understand. So we say, say that you are in a lower kedusha, and the max of your level, you know, the pay grade where you are, the outside kedusha is a five, and your inner kedusha is a ten. Whatever that means. The person is above you. His external kedusha is fifteen. His inner kedusha is a twenty. All right. Now. You achieved everything you needed to achieve. You have a sechel and ikna. All right? Now it's time for you to get to the next level. So guess what? Outside the, the, the next level, there's klipa. There's klipa, there's tumor. It's actually guarding it. Like a peel is guarding, is guarding uh, uh, the fruits. It doesn't let you in. Mm. Now, the klipa. Who's, who's guarding it? Who's guarding the klipa. The klipa. The klipa. The dimyonis. The madama. That's the peel of the orange. That's the peel of the banana. Yeah. That's that's the you know the the, the nut. That you have to crack the, the the shell. That's the shell that is guarding the inside. Inside the kilipot. Inside is the kedusha. You come from the high side. You're a newcomer. What happens is. When you go from one madriga to the next, the madriga stays the same. It's you who is moving. 
what you're taking with you is that cherished Kedusha Pneumius, the inner Kedusha, your ten, that you worked so hard to achieve. That's the thing that goes up. You leave the five behind. You leave the... The Kedusha Chitzin is behind. What happens is... But it also grows eventually. Five stays behind. What happens is that the ten, your Kedusha Chitzin is now come and becomes an external Kedusha to what used to be the external Kedusha of the person before you. His 20 went up. He's also his Kedusha Pneumis went up. He left behind his Kedusha Pneumis the 15. You're in a new Madrega, you're the new boy in town, and your inner Kedusha is what used to be his outer Kedusha, it's 15. Now what used to be the Kedusha of your Torah and Philo now is the Kedusha of your dear Rachel. The ten used to be a third filler. Now you're huh. sleeping and eating as a ten. Huh. And your third filler is what used to be his eating and sleeping, his 15. Okay? So you're actually in a madrega, a pay grade that calls for a 1520. But you all you have is 1015. You just came in. Huh. All right? So the clipper says, whoa, time out. Well, subdue me. I'm subdued only when there's a full, the full volume on, when the light is fully on, when, you know, when the dimmer is fully on. Fifteen twenty brings me down. Ten fifteen. <coughs> Bring it You're down. mine, buddy. <laughs> and suddenly, all the demons come back. But your mamash not on that. That person's madriga, because you said we're all on different madrigas. Right. But this, so this person left behind. Yes. But it's but they're not. You're not really in their. You're not really in their level. That's the There's person. A, a the place. level are the level are stationary. The people are moving. Yeah. Okay. The people are moving through the levels. But nobody. I, no one. No one's at the same level at the same time. Never. So there's hundreds Never. of these levels, thousands, whatever. Millions. Millions, right? Millions that are going up and Millions. down. And yes. Yes, but but never. And when never you move up, that level. you move up. Yeah. If the person above you is worthy, you're pushing him up. You're pushing him up. Yes, right? and if he's up. not worthy, he, goes, he falls down. He down and he you go up. Yes. yes, but no people. There are no two people on earth on the same madriga at the same time. So here you are. It sounds like capitalism. Here you are. Here you are. You are on 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 a ten fifteen. You're the new boy in town. Now you're not driving a car, now you have to drive a truck. You know, a semi-trailer. You have to know how to start, you know, backing up and all kinds of things and what to do this and what to do that and how that. You have the brand new things to learn, okay? That's exactly what I thought of. And, yeah, you know, driving, you know, you're gonna, you're gonna yeah, you know, you know the and then level. the tractor driver or whatever, you're going to the next level. You're going to the next level. There are new things to learn. Yeah. What wakes up are the demonists. And we said, we gave again, again the marshal of the demyonis that come up, you'd think all of a sudden, now I'll have... Eventually you do have brand new demyonis when you finish this, but for a long while, you fall into the same quagmire all over again. You go like, what on earth? What am I doing? Right, right. <laughs> I thought I stopped it <laughs> years ago. What's the story with this? I'm better than that. So I see better schmatter, you're doing the same thing all over again. What's going on? And we gave the muscle for that to understand with the knife in the mud. The muscle was as follows. You have a knife, very nice Solingen knife, Stainless steel, with everything else, which is in the mud. And he said, "Listen, I got this. I got a cook. Anybody got a knife?" So the person will say, "Hey, yeah, I got a knife. Go ahead, use it." He says, "What do you mean, use it? How can I use this to cut the, you know, to cut the meat? I'm not going to poison everybody here. So what do you got to do in order to be able to use this knife? You got to wash it. Okay, you, but use hot water." and use, you know, uh, uh, palm olive or whatever it is, 
you know, and wash it and clean it and make sure that it's clean and it's bright and it's beautiful and it's dry and everything. Now you can cook with it. So for the level of cooking, it is clean enough, okay? Then there's an emergency, you need to do an operation. You say, hey, I got a great knife. Look at this, the Solingen it is stainless steel, it is sharp as anything. You know, and it's clean. Says, what do you mean, you want to kill this person? Why it's clean? That's not clean enough. It may be clean enough for cooking, but it's not clean enough to perform an operation. So you want to clean it to perform an operation? You got to sterilize it. So what do you do? You take the knife, you put it in a sterilizer, and you know, it pours you know, steam, you know, I don't know how many degrees, whatever it is, and you take a look at the knife, and you see a little difference between a sterilized knife and the knife after you washed it with palm olive. A little bit, it's clean, a little. But the difference between the first washing, you know, and when you, after you, when you use it for food, and the second washing, I mean, it was much more dramatic. It was mud, it was maybe rust, was whatever it is, over here, so it's a little clean. But the truth of the matter is, the, the second cleaning, even though it looked much less dramatic, is really a lot more thorough. Yeah. Because it cleaned things that sitting there, <laughs> you know, and, and, and brushing the knife until the cars come home wouldn't have taken off. It's a much deeper cleaning. Yeah, yeah. But it's what inter it's internal. <laughs> but what dirt are you actually cleaning? You're cleaning the same dirt that you did with the mud. It's just a deeper level of the mud. Yeah. So it's the same Demianus. Suddenly, you know, we said, you know, this is, is being that we're all married men over here, suddenly a divorcee gets into, into the building and she happens to look good and you don't talk to her, you don't do anything, but you're going crazy. Yeah, crazy thing, you know, you know uh, this is a, uh, and my wife, I mean, this is my wife already, it was like, I mean, I mean, they, you, you get into craziness that you took, what's the story with my my nuts? I used to be like this, I was in my 20s, I was in my 30s, what's the story with them? All of a sudden, all, you know, in my 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, the same thing all over again, whatever. Go away. I mean, what, what, what happened to me? All of a sudden, you know, I take this book, you know, that, that says all kinds of different things that I should be reading. What's wrong with me? You know, all of a sudden, you know, I, I, I'm doing these things that I used to do, but, and I thought they were gone. What you're dealing with, and you thought, that, and what you think is that you fell. Whoa, what happened to me? I just, you know, crash landed. I crashed and burned now. The answer is, you went up. Huh? You went up to a new Madrega. So the ah, Dionysus came, came up again. But this it. time, being that you're getting into a new level, you have to deal with the, 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 the bacterial level of the tumor. Not the Gashmius level of the tumor. Now you're dealing with deeper level of tumor. Mm. And you have, it looks like the same fight. Yeah. It feels like the same fight. And Rabbeinu says in the name of the Torah, and this is a very common mistake by Hasidim, that they think that they fell off their matrega. Mm. But it's not true. They actually, they went up. Right. And because you went up, suddenly you're doing the same things all over again. And he says, I'm the same guy you all used to be. No, you're not. This is the singular most important lesson that anybody who is on the road of Avodah Hashem needs to learn. You go through it, suddenly you find, wow, Check this out. This is unbelievable. We're learning stuff. I'm flying. I'm, I'm look at me. I'm flying. I'm flying. It's unbelievable. <laughs> unbelievable. And suddenly, you know, you get to a point where, where you're asking yourself, okay, so what now? I don't know what else to do. I did it. Now what? 
And the next thing you know, krach, you crash land smack on the nugget, smack on your head, boom. And you see yourself doing things, thinking things, or whatever it is, each one with his own... <laughs> yes, scorpions, you know, that's the hornets, you know, that nobody should ever, ever, ever look into his friend. Ever. Yeah. Ever. Not only this, but nobody should even confide in his friend about these things. Mm. Only for a Kaddish Baruch. Mm. This is because if you go to somebody, to a friend, and you tell them about it in details, afterwards you'll be so embarrassed from him, it'll kill your relationship with your friend. You can tell them, listen, I fell. <laughs> Don't get into details. Don't get into anything that pulls into, into, into because it'll, it'll crack you. The Kodesh Baruch Hu, the true tzaddik, to him and to them, you can tell everything. And you don't feel, you don't feel degraded for kid, they'll lift you up. Because not only the Dibur, the Dibur is purified, but the voice is purified. The voice comes before the Dibur. The voice is in Zeranpin. In the sixth, if you're the Chesed Boat, if you're the Chesed Boat, the Dibur is in the Malchus. So anybody who is not a Tzadik Emes, so the call may be, you know, the Dibur may be rectified, but the call isn't rectified. It has to be like Moshe Rabbeinu, that with his voice alone, when he admonished Am Yisrael, you see the words that Moshe Rabbeinu said to Am Yisrael, like, whoa, this is like... But the voice of Moshe, they said, near the Nosan Reichoi, Moshe Rabbeinu, when he admonished Am Yisrael, they said, when he admonished them, not, the Gemara doesn't say, doesn't, the, the Kerelos doesn't say it took away the best part, because when you admonish somebody, you make them stink by themselves. You know, as long as people don't find out about it, so you can live with it. It's like, you know, a piece of dirt that nobody moves. So nobody moves, it doesn't stink so much. If you come and you move it suddenly, suddenly is that, yeah. you know, when somebody suddenly shows you, you know, a hidden camera of what you were doing when you thought nobody is watching, it causes your neshama to stink so much a person can kill himself. Well, I know. Never ever try to catch somebody when he's down. If you see that he's on the way there, if you can talk to him and sway him from getting there, but if he's already there, look away. Don't, don't, somebody else's business is not your own, and your own business is not somebody else. You don't talk about these things. But nevertheless, you should know that this is, whenever it is, suddenly you find yourself Before, it, I used to have such a good time. Now, I don't even believe in God anymore. I feel all alone. Everybody left me. Even God left me. The Zohar Kodesh says, V'yivasa Yaakov Levadai, before he fought the Malach. He says, that Yaakov remained alone. The Zohar says, even Kodesh Baruch left him. Before he fought the Malach? Before he fought the Malach. Because... These three madragas of, of Shamir and, and Nofes Tzufen and Amona, they correspond to the, 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 <coughs> the three Kalipo that you have to go through in order to get to the Kedusha that Yechezkel says in the vision of, you know, of the chariot. You know, first of all, there is Ruach Sa'ara, there's a storm wind, and then there's Onan Godel, there's a great cloud, great darkness. And then there's Es Mishlakachas, this is self-taking fire. And then there is uh, Noga, there's, 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 there's a glow. And then there's the Chayos Ratzel Then there's the, 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 living, the living entities that go back and forth. This is where the, the inside is the Kedusha. Of the, the Chayos, this is the Chashmo. This is the, the this is the alarm system of the kedusha itself, the inner kedusha. 
Whenever you go into a madriga, it doesn't matter if you're just learning all of this. It doesn't matter if you are a tzaddikas of Olam and you're reaching levels that have never been reached by humanity before. It always goes through the same thing. You have to go through the first thing that blocks you, the first the three <coughs> totally tumadik eclipses. The first one is Ruach Sa'ara, the, 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 the storm wind. The Zarah says, Ruach Sa'ara, Osed Varoi, the Ruach Sa'ara, you know, does the deed of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, but the meaning all, also, as you know, the, the, what is Ruach Sa'ara? So it says, the Maser Gufa Demanash, that, that storms up the physical reality of a person, both mentally, both emotionally, both physically, both everything, Oisad Vara, the Dibor. The Dibor is the thing that does it. The Dibor is the thing that, that throws it totally off. The, what happens is, the first, the first thing is a storm wind in your physical existence. It's argument with the wife, it's parnasa problems, is, you know, the children need to be, you know, this is a special need child, and this is a this, and this is a that, it's a problem with the landlord, and this is a problem with the area, and this is a problem with the boss, the problem with this. These are all Ruach Sa'ara, that it, it's, 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 it, it is meant to do one thing and one thing only, to keep you away from getting into the Kedusha. You're busy, what are you talking about? Kedusha, Shemusha. Take care of business, what are you doing? You know, that's the first. The second, once you're able to say, okay, listen, I gotta deal with, I gotta deal with, but nevertheless, I gotta keep my eye on the ball, right? You know, you can't drop the ball. You know, if you see the ball, you get a good look at the basket, you know, your NBA, that good shoot, you stay with it. It doesn't matter, you stay with it. So after a while, once you break that Kedusha, you are able to say, okay, I take care of everything I need to take care of, but I got my arm on the ball. The second thing is this unengodled, that darkness, that loneliness, that you feel that nobody hears you. You have pain inside, you have nobody to talk to. I'm talking to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, he doesn't answer me back. They tell me about the tzaddik, but I don't feel him. I believe, I see, you know, I see his limudim, whatever, but I don't I need a human touch, whatever, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm lost. Avram Avinu went through this in the, 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 the covenant between the, 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 the carcasses, the Brisbane of Basara. He says, we now a lot of great darkness come, comes down and great terror, great dread fell on Avram. That fear, that aloneness. But that aloneness is, you know, when you're calling out and you're saying, hello, and the darkness absorbs your, your voice like a pillow, nothing comes back. You're all alone. This is a time of total emunah where you, what you're doing is the thing before when you were dealing with Ruach Sa'ara, you had the Muno. That's it. I know, you know, it disturbs me, but nevertheless, this is it. Now it challenges your very Muna. It challenges your very Seichel. Who is listening to you? Who cares about you? They're all hypocrites anyhow. They're all liars. Look at them. Nobody cares about you. This is a time where you go beyond the Seichel. Going beyond the Seichel is going, the Rabbeinu says, you should know that you will need great stubbornness in the Veda Sashem. What is stubborn? Stubborn means, because that's the way I want it. What do you mean that's the way you want it? Because. Because. But what do you mean because? Because. Because that's the way I want it. Come on, man, be sensible. I know that's the way I want it. On principle, that's the way I don't see it. You know, you know, there is a God, there isn't a God, there is a Tzaddik, there isn't a Tzaddik, there is a Tzaddik, there isn't a Tzaddik, the whole thing is true, the whole thing, I don't care. I, that's what I want. 
You know, okay? You know, if I'm wrong, so what's going to happen? I'm going to die, and nothing's going to happen, no? I'm not going to suffer anything for it. But what if I do the other way around? What if I succumb to this demyoinus now, that I'm all alone, and suddenly, welcome to the party, surprise! You have to go to a, beyond the Seichel. That's the thing that you can use in all the generations to jump into the fire. I don't care. I don't care. Forget, if you're using the Seichel, you'll fall. You pass the Onan Godel. The secret is, is when Moshe Rabbeinu came to Har Sinai, and he says, and great, a great cloud came, a great fog came, darkness came down. So he says, All the the the, the, um, the people, the, this, you know, the, the, the quote-unquote normal guys, they moved afar. They went back. This is nuts for me. Moshe, Moshe niga shel ha'arofel, Moshe went into the darkness. Why? Asher shama elokim, because that is where God is. And I'll tell you a little secret here. Why dafka cloud? Why did? Why is the darkness a cloud? Why not out of space, no light? Why a cloud is a physical entity, right? It's a cloud. I mean, it's 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 very thin, whatever it is. It's a dark cloud, whatever it is. Water, blah 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 blah, whatever it is. But it's it's a mamoshus. Because that darkness is the media upon which the holy message is going to be written. Have you ever flown a plane and the plane is landing at night and it opens up the landing lights? You don't see. You don't know when you open up the landing lights. But suddenly you go through a cloud and suddenly you see the beams of, of the landing lights. It is the blockage of the, of the cloud that the light can be registered on, it can be captured. That darkness, that cloud, is going to end up being the thing, the media upon which the lacus is going to be revealed to you. You have to let go. Just volition alone, just will alone. That's the way I want it. Okay, next step is Eshmi Slakachas, self taking fire. I'm going crazy, man. I'm going to paint the town red. Man, I feel like eating dirty tonight. Forget about it, man. <laughs> <laughs> this is when the son the Mian started having you crazy. Then you say maybe we'll look at you know Game of Thrones. I don't know. Let's just do it, man. Let's just it drives you crazy. And it, and when you overtake that, when you withstand that, the only thing you need to do when this attacks you is just hold on. The thought comes in, you push it out. The push comes in, the thought comes in, you push it out. But the thought comes in and said, I'm what you're looking for. I'm what you always dreamed of. I'm going to give you everything. <laughs> I mean, look at your wife. All these nagging, all these bad things about her. You won't have to live with that anymore. That is going to be so beautiful. That's your soulmate. This is this, this what you were meant for. You're going to miss out on your life. What's going to be with you? It's the sweetness of the seduction of the serpent. Come. <laughs> That's very clever. Come. <laughs> Take my hand. Come closer, said the spider to the fly. <laughs> Sweet I'm voice. Hurt you. I'm just Sweet gonna voice. eat you. Oh no, no, no. <laughs> you know. Can AP come play with us? We ain't gonna hurt him. I'm gonna give you everything. 
I'm going to accept you the way you are. Just the way you are. <laughs> and what you need to do is, it's a demon, it's a clipper, and all that you need to do is, there's no, I want to push this machshava away. But it comes right back. And you push it away. And it comes right back. And the challenge is, until, what are you fighting me for? We both know, you know, that in the fight between an addict and the drug, the drug always wins. You know, if it's nicotine or, or you know, if it's whatever it is, you know, whatever it is, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep on keeping on. And you might have as well just give it up, man. Just let go. And you say, no. Just for today, no. But I'm going to come tomorrow. Okay, come tomorrow. We'll deal with it tomorrow. And it comes and you push it away. And you come and you push it away. And suddenly, when you are done, because there are ten spheres to the Klippa, every Klippa has ten spheres. As long as you haven't finished the entire ten, it looks like you haven't done anything. But suddenly, boom, it's gone. And you take a look at that woman, and you go, ugh. What was I? <laughs> what was I thinking? And those who have fall into this, they discover that, you know, maybe with the previous wives, and after looking, you know, on this particular dogma, you know, with the previous wives, the good stuff he took for granted. Only saw the bad stuff. And yeah. the other one, he thought only the good stuff exists. But he doesn't know about the bad stuff he has to live with. Suddenly you realize that after a few years of loneliness, you're marrying the same wife all over again, only worse. Mm -hmm. Because your wife is exactly your other half. If you're crazy, the only women who are going to be attracted to you are crazy women. <laughs> If you're kind, the only woman is going to be attracted to you are kind women. If you're a masochistic, a sadistic woman will be attracted to you. We, we, we just, we project these things. This is all the meonis. The only thing you need to do is just keep on keeping on. The main lesson of Eidus Hashem is keep on keeping on. I fell down, I got up, I was alone. I'm burning with tivus, I'm burning with, with vices and whatever it is. And pow! You enter to Kedusha. Suddenly you are in a level that you never even realized it existed before. It's not that you are more than you were before. Like a grown-up is not a child only more. It's a different being altogether. It's a new Madragan of Odysseus. You learn how to do it. You go th now. The going through the Kilipot gives you the tools to acquire the Kedusha. Because what do you know? Which tools you're going to need? What kind of emotional, spiritual, you know, containers you need to have in order to collect that rain? That Shefa. You don't know. Well, the menias, the obstacles that are standing on your way as you're getting into the Kedusha, by overcoming them, whatever it is you need to do, you need you took care of business in the Ruach Sa'ara and you kept your mind, you, you still were focused to do whatever it is that you could and you kept on steadfastly. That equipped you with one tool to be able to compartmentalize whatever it is and to be able to work. The only thing is hang on. Just hang on. <laughs> then comes this darkness. The darkness enables you to accept that, that there are situations that the mind doesn't give you the answers anymore. Only the Rotsai. Rav Ashlag reveals a great secret when he says 
Kodesh Baruch Hu created the world something from nothing. But the Kodesh Baruch Hu is everything. Where was there nothing to... <laughs> Where's the nothing? What? The world was nothing. But the Kodesh Baruch Hu is everything. No, no such thing. Everything is a Kodesh Baruch Hu. What? How can a Kodesh Baruch create something from nothing? A Kodesh Baruch is everything. There is no nothing. What was missing? It had to be created something from nothing. So he says, the only thing that existed that had to be created is the will to receive. That's the one thing a Kodesh Baruch does not have. The will to receive the way the, the, the way that the will to receive the resoluteness to receive is the thing that creates the tools to satisfy that desire you want to become a millionaire <clears throat> you can become a millionaire creating matchboxes building airplanes uh, doing anything they are all just tools in the desire to get there, the ambition, the will. That's the reason why the Yetzirah comes first before the Yetzirah. Yetzirah comes at age 13. The Yetzirah, as if he needed any more help, comes straight forward. Why? Because the Kodesh Baruch cannot give you anything you don't want. So first of all, you have to develop the will to want. I want, I want, I want, I want, I want, I want a candy, I want a this, I want ice cream, I want mommy, buy me, give, give me, give me, give me. And the, the bigger you grow, the more, the more, the more, the more, the more, the more you get. Then you become a mitzvah, assuming that you have some seichel, so you learn Torah. And now you want to love Abba. You also want to also you learn, you want to be the good Lador, you want to be this, you want to be a London, you want to be an Ovid, you want to be this, you want to be a Tzadik. You want, you want, you want, you want, you want, you want, you want. At a certain point in time, you're still, you're still very, very far from a Kodesh Baruch Even if you're a Tzadik, you're still very, very far from a Kodesh Baruch In fact, you're the opposite of a Kodesh Baruch Because the Kodesh Baruch only gives. And you only want to receive. And it's in Ruchnius, distance is what they call a Shvas Tzura. I mean, it's not a, it's, it's, it's not a location. If you're a communist and now I'm a capitalist, we can sit right next to each other. We're very, very far. But if we're both communists, you are in China and I'm in Timbuktu, we're very close. Because in Ruchnius, it's the Tzurid. So if Kodesh Baruch is a giver and I'm a receiver, I'm, I'm the, the, the diametrically opposite. I'm as far as can be from a Kodesh Baruch of Ruchnius. I'm the opposite. For sure. so at a certain point, because I want to receive and he wants to give. He's a giver and I'm a receiver. How different can we be? I have to be one with him and I'm the opposite of him. At a certain point in time in the Abayi Hashem, what you do is you flip, you build the will to receive to the highest extent. You want to be a tzaddik. You want to be everything. And you take the whole thing and you flip it over. And you give it to Kodesh Baruch Hu. says, I want to receive for one reason. I want to receive in order to give you your pleasure of giving. I don't need anything. Right, right. It's for you, not for me. Right. It's for you. I want this. I want Pernasa. I want Kedusha. I want to be a Tzadik. But not because I want. Hmm. So that you can give. Then you're both givers. Hmm. Then you're one with the Kaddish Baruch. This is called Vekas. Vekas. That's the reason why you have to go through all this development of the ego, of the wanting, of the, the, the so you'll be able to eventually flip it over and give it to a Kodesh Baruch Hu, so a Kodesh Baruch Hu can give. Then you're both givers. And you're both receivers. Because you gave to Hashem. That's a big secret. And it says, Reach nichoach ishel Hashem. You know, a, a smell, a delicious smell, the ishel Hashem. Isha Hashem basically means a burnt offering. Hmm. But Isha, Isha is also the same letter as Isha, as woman, right. as female. When you're giving a Nachas Ruach to Kodesh Baruch Hu, you're the male Kaviyach, and the Kodesh Baruch Hu is the female. Kodesh Baruch Hu is the Makabal, he's the receiver. 
So he is the one who surrounds you. Nekevat esovet gever. He surrounds you. That's the chashmo. And the Kodesh Baruch Hu guards it. You are the inside, the Kodesh Baruch Hu is the outside. There's a wondrous, fantastic asagas that you get. When you, get, you can only get them by going through every step, and every step that you went through got you the tools that taught you in order to receive the new sagas and the new madrega. Ad kan is an absolute for today. Shh, shh, shh.